All right, Sierra Leone decides 2023, fake news, misinformation, and disinformation have become increasingly prevalent in recent years due to the rise of social media platforms. These types of information can be easily spread and shared, often without any checks or balances to ensure their accuracy. During an election, this can be particularly harmful as false information can influence voters and potentially sway the election results. One way in which fake news, misinformation, and disinformation can impact an election is by creating a sense of confusion and mistrust among voters. When people are exposed to conflicting information, they may become uncertain about what to believe, leading them to disengage from the political process altogether. This can have a negative impact on voter turnout, which can ultimately affect the outcome of an election. Moreover, fake news, misinformation, and disinformation can be used to target specific groups of voters. For example, false information about a particular candidate's stance on an issue could be spread to supporters of the opposing candidate in an attempt to dissuade them from voting. This can be particularly effective in tight races, where every vote counts. Another way in which fake news, misinformation, and disinformation can impact an election is by amplifying existing biases and prejudices. False information that reinforces perceived, uh, preconceived notions about a particular candidate or group of people can be particularly effective in influencing voters who are already inclined to believe it. This can lead to the election of candidates who may not be well suited for the job, potentially leading to negative con consequences for the country. As such, it is crucial that efforts are made to combat the spread of false information during election periods. This can be achieved through a combination of media literacy, education, fact-checking initiatives, and increased regulation of social media platforms. Ultimately, ensuring the accuracy of information during the elections is essential to maintaining the integrity of the democratic process. Tonight, we're taking a deep dive into the implications of fake news and misinformation on the nation's peace and democracy. My name is Samuel Wise Bangura, and this is AYV on Sunday. And a very warm welcome to AYV on Sunday here. Um, today we're looking into the implications of fake news and misinformation on the nation's peace and democracy, especially as the June um, general elections are almost here. You can follow us on DSTV channel 399, on radio, FM 11.7, on our local channel, um, channel 33, and on all our different social media platforms, especially AYV News Facebook page, where you have the opportunity to be part of the conversation, share your thoughts, ask your questions there. But as always, there's a plea. And sure you tailor your messages to the issues being discussed here tonight. We shall be joining Sally Fuchi on camera to go through some of um, the comments that you'll be sending. But here with me, as always, I have a star-studded panel of people who are in touch with the issues to help me unpack um, the conversation for the next two hours. I have Istina Taylor, who is the president for Women in the Media. Cyril, Istina, good evening and welcome to the Women's Sunday. Mm. I have um, Dr. Tonya Musa, who is a media and communications expert. He also lectures at the University of Cyril, probably college to be precise. Um, Doc, good evening and welcome to good the Good evening show. and thanks for having me. Right, I have the president for the Salian Association of Journalists, um, Ahmed Sahid Nazrala, the monk. Good evening. Good evening, Samuel. Good evening, viewers and listeners. Right, I have the co-author of a book um, recently published um, entitled um, Combating Fake News, um, a guide to Sierra Leone's 2023 election, truth in the ballot box, um, Mahmoud Tim Kabu. Um, good evening, Tim. Good evening, Samuel, and good evening, listeners. All right, um, uh, le let's start off. Um, Dr. Musa, with for obvious reasons. Now, what's the idea? Would love to, to, to put the conversation into context. So help us understand what fake news, misinformation, and disinformation are all about. They are all misleading information. Mm. Basically, if you take fake news, for example, you are talking about false news. Mm. And then if you talk about misinformation, it's also um, false information, mm -hmm. more or less. But then this information is false, but it is deliberate. And in this case, when you talk about social media, it's about user-generated content. Mm -hmm. And in this case, people normally create their own content. Mm -hmm. And what is happening now, for example, the use of TikTok, WhatsApp, mm -hmm. etc. People can easily crop pictures, videos, and then present them with you know, text messages mm -hmm. indicating that this is what has happened 
but we are in the know for true that it is not the case. Mm. Say, for example, if you are talking about party colors, we have parties, you know, in Sierra Leone that mm. are prominent in politics. But similar political parties in terms of colors mm. exist in Ghana or even Nigeria, right. where we have larger population. Mm -hmm. So a situation in Nigeria might easily be conveyed in Sierra Leone, for example, where people have red, and then they present it as a situation in Sierra Leone. Right. Similarly, with the green in Ghana, mm -hmm. they can also bring that in Sierra Leone and present it as a situation in Sierra Leone. Such an attempt is disinformation because it is deliberate. Mm -hmm. You come to misinformation, is a situation wherein also you provide misleading information. And in Sierra Leone, we are quick to share. We don't verify, we don't fact check, we don't cross check, we don't ask necessary questions. So in this case, no sooner I see it, I can easily transfer that. Mm -hmm. But then what is very serious in this case, for example, is where people attempt to deliberately mislead people through things like press releases or press statements or even information that may be very authentic coming from the election management bodies. And in this case, normally, the media strategy hmm. alongside the election management framework. So that at the end of the day, what you have just highlighted at the opening, we can actually guard ourselves against hmm. as best as possible. because. We are talking about voter turnout. You are talking about, you know, reinforcing concepts of ethnicity, mm -hmm. tribalism, and the like. And then the opportunity now to make content or generate content that could be misleading is very obvious. And in this case, a conversation of this nature, I think, is timely. And it is also very important, like you highlighted, that it will bring about what we call media literacy. It can also create awareness about regulatory framework, and it can also help for, for uh, help us to know about alternative actions. For example, where we have misleading information, fake news, or we even have misinformation, malinformation, disinformation, or any other form of misleading information, what we can do as society in terms of working towards free and fair elections. In, in, um, in, in the build up to the elections, um, the stakes are getting higher. And um, we're, we're seeing these are tools been employed already by those controlling the social media space especially. Now, I, I, how does this situate with the trend of um, political propaganda as against those who are, well, experts in exploring the areas of fake news, misinformation, and disinformation to, to steer a ship that might create tension in Sierra Leone? Of course, we are talking about politicizing social media. Mm. You know, we must not also lose sight of the fact that it is pro-social and at the same time anti-social, mm. meaning it could be used and then abused. So you are emphasizing about the abuse. Yeah. And in this case, politicians can easily take that to their advantage because we are having a society that is largely gullible and then most people depend on, rely on opinion leaders, otherwise influencers. Mm. And so when they come on social media platform and they choose to do otherwise, it means they are going to carry the bulk of the people along. Mm -hmm. For example, in terms of audio production, people are good at that now. But then you have opportunity to also segment the audio into your own purpose, mm. and then add pictures to it, text to it, and you get that to TikTok, you know? And then when you get followers who are very new on TikTok platform, for example, they are carried away with the technology itself. A system where you see my picture, and then you see the picture, somebody is talking from my back, pointing at me, and then saying that this is what I have done, mm -hmm. accompanying with audio that can also be part of SoundForge, I mean, it can easily be, be, be misleading. But we have it now as part of the technology that we are going to actually use, and we have to adapt to it. Mm. Again, you go to journalism, for sure. Traditionally, we used to do what we call fact check, cross check. Mm -hmm. But the situation is now that you easily have press releases, for example, carrying inscriptions right. that you consider authentic. And then they come from sources, you know. So at the end of the day, journalists also who are very lazy may just conclude that this is factual. And then they end up sending that out. And then you have, um, you know, pool of information, you know, but they are polluted. This is what you talk about, information pollution mm -hmm. coming from hotspots. And the pollutants are the things that we have just mentioned. So as we get closer to the election, the situation is going to be serious. Why? 
If you go to the 2018 elections, for example, before the announcement by the returning officer, the nation had already got 99% of the results on WhatsApp platforms, district by district. Mm. So people are now aware of that. They are ready to work on that in their different, what you call, situation rooms. So meaning the results have even been prepared now before the elections. Right. So they are just waiting to release them. Mm -hmm. So this is why it is very much important for us to understand the manipulative rooms, techniques, devices, and key actors you know, who may be interested in misleading the public. Yeah. And then how best we can reverse that mm -hmm. you know, using platform of this nature. All right. Uh, Ahmed, let me bring you in. Um, the fact that um, Dr. Musa mentioned um, um, journalists, mainstream journalists, um, not the citizens, <laughs> journalists, <laughs> but mainstream journalists. Um, I think about a week or two ago, I had a conversation with Edward Q. He is the African editor for France 24. And, what we dis and we were discussing the elections and how new technologies have created a path where even what you put out, I mean, might create some doubt. So now there are, there are softwares that I can get your voice, and it's Ahmed Sahim Nasrallah. Mm -hmm. And for us, once that is hard, we, t we take it as it is. It's from Ahmed Sahim Nasrallah. Mm -hmm. So how much of an understanding um, do journalists in Sierra Leone have about fake news, misinformation, and disinformation, and how that would impact the, the, the practice itself? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I think journalists are aware about this, about disinformation, malinformation, and the uh, fake news from 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 time immemorial. Eh? Mm. Yes, we 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 have a part of our own and training and, and ethics. We we have been used to fact checking information mm -hmm. by cross checking information, right. and trying to attribute and trying to ensure you get all sides to the story and trying to maintain that credibility. Yes, but I think now. They, uh, we are struggling in terms of um, getting the tools mm. to be able to fact check in this age of digital, mm -hmm. digitalization. So that is the, that's, that's where we are now, and that's why Sludge is embarking on, on training of journalists mm. to fact check during these elections, mm. to do social, moni uh, social media monitoring, and to also be exposed to the basic tools of um, checking out social media for problematic content mm. and trying to ensure that citizens have access to credible information. So it's a new, it's a new challenge, and um, we are embarking on this for the first time in terms of um, the tools, like I said, right. because um, fact-checking on social media, you have to be exposed to the tools. It's mm -hmm. also digital. Right. Because information is there in the, in the virtual space, and you also have to have the tools to be able to ensure that this photo is real, this voice is from the right person, mm -hmm. and um, these um, images are, are from the right event, from the right location, and this is from the right source, because we, 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 we've seen where AYB front pages have been also manipulated right. mm -hmm. um, to carry different headlines from the one that yeah. you published. And so these are, all, these are all tricks, and these are all things that we are also trying to learn to be able to position ourselves during this election so that we're able to identify them and flag them as quickly as possible so that it doesn't co cause, undermine the credibility of the, of the election or the election process and undermine citizens' access to the credible information. So how much of an effort have we made um, as a profession in terms of fact-checking initiatives so that journalists are better placed to be able to tell when this is fake, when this is meant to misinform, or this is meant to disinform the public? It is training. Training. That's, that's why we are focused right now on training. If you look at our programs for, the, for these elections, we have two programs. We have one with the UNDP, which is the iVerify platform. I think they have been doing some fantastic work in the last two years, but we want to hear from the public how far they have, they have, they have been able to assess them, whether mm -hmm. they are doing the right work. But if you look at the churn and churn of information that is out there on the elections, and disinformation and misinformation and, and, and fake news around the elections, you, you cannot fact check all of them. Yes. And so what we are trying to do now is to try to get them to prioritize what they should fact check. We want to look at those information or those, those issues that have the potential to undermine the elections, the credibility of elections, that, that have the potential to cause division and to cause violence. So that is what we are trying to do. So it's basically training. We, are, we, are, we, have, we have trained them. They are now in, they are, they are now in the, in the, in the slug headquarters and doing their work. And we also have another one with, with the NDI, National Democratic Institute. They've also gone on, on that two days training on last week, um, um, Tuesday and Wednesday. And so that one is across the country. We have a team here in Freetown at the headquarters as, as well. And we have at the regional headquarters as well one fact checker, one supervisor, one fact checker in the north, in the south, in the east, in the south, and the northwest, with one supervisor. So that is basically going to be their role, to 
do social media monitoring, scan the, the, the social media networks, look out for this potential uh, content that are, that, that are false, that are misleading, that are manipulated, and then flag it with the, with the headquarters here, and then we try to verify. But in all of this, I think the common thing around, um, along all of this um, misinformation or this misleading content is the only tribe where there is a vacuum. Hmm? And so you, to counter them, it is not only the responsibility of, of the media, mm -hmm. of us large, or of the media. It is a collective, a collective effort, because in the elections, the main source of information comes from the EMBs, the election commission, the police, and the PPRC, in our own case. Mm. And so once we have access to the information in a timely manner, in a timely fashion, ahead of those who will try to manipulate it, then the better for us. That is the only way we can avoid. We cannot stop people from manipulating, from creating manipulative content and to, to deceive people or deceive the public. We can never stop them, because it's everybody's choice to do so, and people who have ulterior motives, they want to do that. But then we have to position ourselves to ensure that we have a relationship with the EMBs to ensure that they are forthcoming with the information in a timely fashion so that we have access to it, to put it out there so that the public have access to this information before anyone can try to manipulate them. Um, Istina, choose not to answer this. <laughs> we, we, we live in a society where we've been able to understand, us the journalists, mm -hmm. we've been able to understand how powerful we are in society, how much we influence um, society and how much society depends on us to make informed or better decisions. So I think for some of us, we've been able to, to, to take that space and um, use it, I would not want to say abuse, but use it for our own gains. In the sense that um, we I might belong to, to, to party purple. Mm -hmm. And so when I have the space to do what is needed, I then have to skew conversations or sway opinions to to party purple. And then in, in return, that might spark some trouble. So first off, what's the level of responsibility that we must ensure we take as media practitioners when we tend to utilize even the social media space? Because almost all of us now are on social media, and we, we tend to use those spaces as, oh, it, it has nothing to do with AYV. It's my personal Facebook page. It's my TikTok account and all of that. How do we handle those things? So um, as a professional, you have to understand that when you are a journalist, there is no difference between the personal and your professional life. That's something you have to be careful with. So meaning, even if you're going out, let's say now about how you behave, even if you're going out now, you're, you're also representing AYV. So when you behave, what you say will be quoted as someone. So there was a case a um, um, long time ago while I was with BBC Media Action mm -hmm. in, in the UK. So a particular journalist was, um, I think, Sidewinger or so, and he said a whole lot of stuff in his personal account. Mm. And when they were doing the investigations and they held him responsible, he was sacked because mm -hmm. of that. Because you, it's hard to differentiate your personal and your professional life. So that's why we have a very huge responsibilities. Mm. You know, as, um, as journalists, as media person personalities, the responsibility is huge on us. There is a load that we're carrying. We are to protect. We are to be that safeguard. Do we are to be like this gatekeeper that makes sure that even though that um, social media is now a breeding ground mm. for a whole lot of misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation, we must keep the, the strong um, hold. We must make sure that we stand fast, we stand a very strong, making sure that the information that people get from us, mm -hmm. and whether it's our personal account, whether you are affiliated to a particular political party, mm -hmm. make sure if you are a practicing journalist and if you want to be a trusted journalist, make sure that you differentiate yourselves from your, your personal thoughts. Most times when you go out on social media, when you post things, make sure you're posting things that is not contradicting your professional life. Mm -hmm. let, 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 let's talk about, at this critical period, how crucial it is for us to understand um, that we've, we, we've, we've seen many reports come out. Mm -hmm. um, ranking Sierra Leone as one of three uh, most fragile countries in the, in, in the subregion, looking at our peace being um, deteriorated with Thor now fourth in the region and all of that. It puts the nation at a very um, 
fragile situation, should I say. Mm -hmm. So how much should we pay attention to that, especially in the build-up to the June pools, with all of this flying around, fake news, misinformation, disinformation coming from a group that should be trusted, from a group that is said to be, um, well, we've always gone with the fact that information is power. We've left out the accurate information that is really power. So how do we then factor all of those things at this period? Um, I think journalists should, if you want to, you have a right to belong to a political party. Mm. But if you want to be in active politics, it is for your own best, in your own best interest, to leave the journalism uh, um, 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 sphere for a while. Mm and focus, you go, make sure that there is something that shows that I am leaving, I am going into politics. You might come back, there might be some issue with the trust, because I believe in that. With the training I have, and with the, my years of experience, mm -hmm. I believe that if you've gone to be a politician, and you come back to becoming a journalist, there is some amount of trust issues. But this, the responsibility, as I said, is not only on um, the journalist. Now, as individuals, we, um, the journalist, gone are the days, and I miss the days when people would call us and ask for information. Mm. People would call us in my area when I started journalism, when I'm walking along, people would stop me and say, Estina, this and this and this happened. Is it true? Mm. Nobody does that to me right now. Nobody cares if I am a journalist or mm -hmm. not. Now people can use their phone, they can take pictures. There are lots of apps where people can change their, the voice, where mm -hmm. people can change, just as um, Doc was saying, where people can change and do something. But we have to be careful. We have to be intentional because you might get yourself into trouble. You might be distrusted. Mm -hmm. So these are all the, the risks um, attached to, to that. So you have to be careful when you deal with information, when you let information out, mm -hmm. whether you're a citizen journalist, <laughs> or whether you're a journalist, or whether you're just a citizen. Mm. You have to be careful. Now, there are a few things that you have to um, do. Which so, um, first thing, when it comes to pictures, you, there, there are things you, you can check online to um, um, get it something. There is this, um, um, I've forgotten the, but I will, re I will, be, okay. I will remember and mm -hmm. then I'll, I'll mention it. You can check there and see if the picture if, if the picture is there, it means it's real. Get the image? Yeah, get the image. And then there is this reverse. reverse there yes. is reverse, thank mm -hmm. you. There is reverse image. So mm -hmm. with reverse image, you can check and see. So there are, there are times people doctor these right. pictures to, to suit them. Some things happened in other countries, mm -hmm. and then they put it, as Doc was saying, that it, it is in Sierra Leone. Right. So we have to be intentional. We have to be careful. We have to ask questions. We have to make sure that when we want to send something out, out, we are really sure that this is right. So to protect yourself. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me just, let Go ahead. Yeah. I, I want to disagree with you somewhere. Because oh, in your no. statement you said um, the information, the disinformation is coming from journalists. Mm -hmm. I don't think that is the case. No. <laughs> yes, I yeah, don't think yeah, that no, is the case. We need to understand how right. this information right. travels mm -hmm. from social media mm -hmm. to local communities. Right. We need to understand who are the people who mm -hmm. who 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 distribute right. or who disseminate this kind yeah. of information. Mm -hmm. That's why we are we. That's why we need to ensure that the public understands how professional journalists. Um, um, mm -hmm. make news mm -hmm. and disseminate them, mm -hmm. as, as opposed to those who are just using so social media to create content and just uh, put it out there. But okay. we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about that. Yes, I'll, I'll come to that. Yes. I, I, actually, actually my, my, my thoughts um, was around amplifying those voices, yes. because even um, crafting conversations, mm -hmm. I might get somebody who would have incited something mm -hmm. and then start to mm -hmm. say, oh, he said this, 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 mm -hmm. and this. Mm -hmm. So I'm amplifying, so we'll yes. come to that. Okay. But let me bring Tim. The, 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 the concept of citizen journalism is making it worse. With a space that is very challenged to regulate the social media, now we're saying, oh, well, now the cyber um, um, crime law act is here to perhaps make some, bring some form of sanity in that space. But let's talk about what attempt did the book um, you wrote make to, to, to address the issue of fake news? But basically, the, the book looks at um, <clears throat> the current challenges that we have as a country, and especially coming towards the June 24th election. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I lost my voice Quiet. when I dropped. <clears throat> so the book looks at um, key areas, uh, trying to see how we can uh, 
create um, shine light, using journalists to shine light on some of the key information that we need to use uh, with respect to the um, coming elections. Mm -hmm. Because when we look at it and we, we watch at the social media, we see exactly the amount of disinformation and misinformation that keep on um, spreading around. And mm -hmm. we look at it uh, we, together with uh, some of the rankings that you rightly mentioned. We, look, we sit quietly in our own in our own, um, no one sponsored us. We look at it as patriotic nationals and say, well, we need to come up with something on this. Mm. So we do our research and then come up with what we, 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 we wrote in the book. What we're trying to do is <clears throat> to put journalists in, in, in front so that they can take up their responsibility with a patriotic sense of purpose mm -hmm. and champion the cause to see how we can change this narrative. But we cannot do that without using journalists because when you talk about disseminating the right information, mm -hmm. you need to get the right people on board. So that is why we deliberately target journalists, we target the, um, the, the politicians, and then public opinions mm -hmm. as, uh, as well. So if we get the right information outside there, and we get journalists that are committed, that are ready to look at this information and look at it and say, come on, can I just give a comment on this information? It is not the right information. Mm -hmm. And then someone will just pick it up from that angle and then keep on um, sharing it, just as I, I, I normally do. Sometimes when I bump into this information in social media, I will just look at them, use my apps, and then fact check mm -hmm. and give advice. From I do a brief summary, analyzing, showing why I see this is a, this is a complete misinformation or disinformation, and no one should engage in this. And once I do that, others will just pick it up and keep on sharing it. So that is what we are trying to do. A, a, a specific incident cited in the book? Well, yeah, of course, we cite previous um, um, misinformation that led to violence in Sierra Leone with respect to um, elections. So we cited all those, all those um, previous incidents. And then we warned that the essence of the book is to ensure that mm -hmm. professionalism is, is put on top of the pyramid, especially for journalists, and also a patriotic sense of nationalism is also put on top of the pyramid for the politicians. Mm -hmm. Because just as President rightly say, we have those that are disseminating this particular information. And what they are doing is they have their political stooge. They are not journalists. They just give them the information, and sometimes they are doing the piece themselves and give them to share it. So if you call them and try to question them on that particular piece, they cannot substantiate because they know they are not the rightful authors. But what they want to do is to create, just create tension or try some time trying to get some negative um, admiration from their political, their political uh, um, um, leaders. So they do these things and then give their voice. So what we try is to set the political um, landscape right, use the right information, the right um, 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 enthusiasm, the right energy to ensure that you spread that information that will not create tension for us or for the suffering majority. Because at the end of the day, it will affect us all as a nation. What, what, what was the context? Because already ethno-regionally, Sierra Leone is divided along political lines. Sure. And um, we get to see that every now and then based on how the parties are structured. So what um, is the context you looked at in the book? It, 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 in essence, I'm trying to understand, are these the reasons, these are the reasons why we're seeing the increase of fake news, misinformation, disinformation, these are the, the, the impacts, what's the context? It is, it is as a result of the division, that is why we are getting this um, high level of um, a misinformation that are spread, or fake news that are spreading around. Mm -hmm. I, I think politicians have a major role to play on mm -hmm. this, because when you talk about the divisions, they are responsible. And uh, we've looked at it, both political parties, the two major political parties are engaged in misinformation and disinformation. And we have to call it by things by their names here if we want to get to the bottom of this and get a tangible solution to mm -hmm. put an end to it ahead of the elections. Both of them are involved in it, both the incumbent and the main opposition party. So this has continued to fuel some tensions. If you go to the southeast, you are an APC member, then you, 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 you can get, you can be targeted, you risk being targeted. Mm -hmm. So too in the, in, the, in the north. So we want to make, to make this thing very, very simple. That politics doesn't necessarily call for tension. What we need is to get the right information, prepare your, your campaign messages in a manner in which you will capture the interest of the ordinary man without getting involved in regionalism or tribalism or any other odd things that will create tension for the suffering majority. All right. D D Dr. Musa, just before we, 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 we try to directly link these um, fake news, misinformation, and disinformation to the election, first of all, I, I would love to have um, your thoughts on what do you think is responsible for 
um, the increase in fake news, misinformation, disinformation, what, what's really created that space for it to thrive? Well, if we are to look at the current situation, we talk about unhe unhealthy political conversation mm. or unhealthy political rivalry. You know, basically, as, you know, Tim was talking, he was more or less looking at, you know, the impacts. Mm -hmm. But the causative is also very important. Right. You know, the issue we are talking about here, we have mentioned journalists. But mm -hmm. we can say the situation about journalists, you know, propelling it is not as serious as other influencers mm -hmm. who are on the platform that are not necessarily journalists. Right. And this is why we have to understand that there are huge influencers who are using social media in the wrong way. Mm. And they might easily send out what you call hate messages, insightful statements, and then whether, you know, people are going to verify, cross-check, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. They yeah. just follow them. Whatever they say, they accept it. So it's like what we see in the media, all-powerful effects. Mm. So that effect is on the audience or the masses who just believe that whatever their godfathers are saying is correct. Mm. And you come to the use of Twitter, for example, you may realize that even educated people, mm. you know, but because of political vendetta, they may choose to tweet things that are not correct, mm. things that are misleading. What are you going to say about them? You know, and then you now come to the common platform where everybody can easily post what he or she feels. Mm -hmm. That is WhatsApp. And it can use or accommodate any type of, you know, local languages in Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. audio form. So as a result, people are not interested even in fact-checking, cross-checking. The mm -hmm. issue about I verify, fact-check is more for journalists, mm -hmm. you know. But then the other people there is just about saying, okay, my president has already mm -hmm. sent the message here, the voice note and his president mock and journalist. So I just have to accept mm -hmm. what he has said. Mm -hmm. So we have that type of setting. So this is where, for example, we talk about hotspots. The hotspot can even move from social media to a tire base. Mm -hmm. Now, some people may have little on social media and amplify it among those who are tire base. They don't even have access to social media. Mm -hmm. But the reference point is from social media. So what has been discussed at the tire base will now be the message home. And when they reach home, they will tell the entire family that this is what they have said, and we have to abide by it. So this is where we have to look at the causative. What In as much as he was talking about the effect or the impact mm -hmm. that the book or literature is talking about. What, what, was there a gap? I'm asking because going back, there, there, there was Johnny at, associated with SLPP, and there were audios that were widely condemned because they were thought to be very provocative to even the stability of the state. Yeah. There's Adebayo associated with the APC. I mean, he's gotten a grip. So what's really created that gap that these guys have occupied? I mean, a space that is so trust that many people follow. So I was talking about influencers. These are influencers who have huge followers. And it was about information gap. Hmm. Some of the situations that gave them prominence was that they made use of the gap that existed. Mm. And when that gap existed, they filled the gap. They filled the and gap. now they have consolidated yeah. their space. Sure. Mm. And so their followers are following them. So you have to find ways and means now to counter them, you know, in a way that people can understand what is the fact, mm. and not only the fact, but people can improve on their political culture. Remember, this is all about political culture, which right. means the knowledge, the interest, the attitude, and the judgment. Mm. So people are easily judging that what the king is saying, as they call him, mm -hmm. is what is the gospel. They have to follow the king. Right. You understand? But then somebody else somewhere might say, why? What made him king? Mm -hmm. You understand? So it means our society you know, requires much civic engagement. And then we are not only going to engage our conversation on the platform itself, mm -hmm. because 40% of what we are saying is on the platform. 60% is not on the platform. Mm -hmm. And that 60% is what is creating the effect. So for example, most of the people here you have just mentioned, are they by or they are here to listen in. They are here to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. But whatever those who listen him we say to those who are not listening, they just come, come to a conclusion right. that it is factual. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you now see that the problem or the challenge is not more or less with the journalist. Why? Because the journalist has what we call large code of conduct that guides him or her to conduct him or herself. Mm -hmm. There is the IMC code of practice that will restrict the media house in terms of what to do. Now you go to those I've just mentioned 
who are waiting on the long bench, mm -hmm. the other locations, as you say, they are the attire base, yeah. they are in the Poda Poda going home and the like. And then whatever they are going to tell their families, mm -hmm. their close friends, they are going to believe them without processing them. So this is where the seriousness lies. And now as we approach the election, like I said, mm -hmm. you are talking about disinformation. Yeah. The seriousness of that is going to deal with figures and names. All right? right? And then that will not be the responsibility of journalists. Before they come in with their stories, people are already misled or misinformed people mm -hmm. about what the reality is. Now start with the very nature of the elections. We used to have simple majority. We are now talking about 11% and the like. Even how to distribute that, if we are not quick enough, social media conversation is going to cause serious problems. Because, because yes, because people are already waiting that I have voted, and I voted for Samia in this constituency. Right. Irrespective of whatever they are saying, Samia is going to be, you know. So this is where we have to actually be mindful about what we are going to do in as much as we are improving, or there is what we call changing democracy, mm -hmm. we also have to ensure that we respond to the new technology. Mm -hmm. And that is why, and that is why all, all, we also as journalists need to understand the PR system, the new electoral system. We have to understand it for the fullest because we will be in the position to be able to explain to the public about that system. And counter fake yes, news. Yeah, it's about yes, whether they are willing to listen to credible voices as well. Oh. Just as to what talk is. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. So let me ask a question. So as you say that, let's take a look at the mainstream media, for example. I know it's a space study. Of course, there is some form of sanitization. But let's look at the space and see how even ownership of the media houses. So you have... It is, it is very clear that some media houses are owned indirectly by politicians, by politicians. some are financed beneficial, by politicians. Beneficial and so the issue of disinformation, again, comes into, comes play. into play. So I want well, to skew well, this in, yes. in favor of this as mm -hmm. against this. And exactly. it's the well, That is not basically disinformation. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the problem we have with our own journalists is mm -hmm. the fact that they have gone political. And yes. they have come out to the public and say we are, we are supporting this political party. Not that they are, they are putting out this information to mislead the public, but they have, they have been bold enough to come out and say we are supporting this political party and we are going to put all our energies to ensure that this political party or this candidate wins, as opposed to putting the public's interest first. That, that, is, that is the problem we have with them, not with them disseminating this, and, and, and misinformation. The misinformation comes from the space, the civic space that we have. In that civic space, there is no room for the ordinary voice anymore. Mm. All those people you see there talking, commenting on issues, they have political, they have political, uh, they have right. affiliations, they have agenda, mm -hmm. and so they are talking on behalf of the people. Which people? Which ordinary people? It's their own interest they are talking about. Mm -hmm. So they have crowded that space, and there is no room for that ordinary voice again, the voice of the voiceless, mm -hmm. that ordinary woman in the, in the village you want well, to turn the mic on. They are claiming to be the voice of the voiceless. Yes, yeah, they are claiming to be the voice of the voiceless. So that's the problem we have. Yeah. And so that is, that, is, that is very tricky. And the gap you're talking about, mm -hmm. the information gap, yeah. which Antina was talking about. Remember we have in some, um, fake news is not new, and yeah. this information is not new. Yeah. Remember we have Bush Radio back then, in yeah. the days before, before we have the social media now. Yes. It, it, it used to be Bush Radio. Mm -hmm. People spread this, this news by word of mouth. Yeah. And it spread like Bush in the in the, in the Amatan. Mm -hmm. OK, so now we, we used to have um, um, David Tambayo. Mm -hmm with the monologue program. Yeah. Remember that program? Yeah. Every Saturday, yeah. every Sierra Leonean who want to listen yeah. will be by the radio to listen to that program, <laughs> to our monologue program, talking about issues of governance, corruption, expositions, and, and so many things. Mm -hmm. And people, people trusted him because he, he, he seemed to be independent, yeah. he, he seemed to be serving the public's interest, and he seemed to be holding the government and the public officials to account. But then he just faded it away. I think that is, that, that is the space that um, Adebayo and others have now, have now, have now, have now, right. have now, have now taken over. Mm -hmm. And because we also journalists, we also have blocked in that area. And the government right. also have blocked in that area. Communicating to the public doesn't mean just going on TV or just putting out press release on social media and you think mm -hmm. you have communicated to the, to, the, to the general public. No. There are community radio stations as well. There are local channels. If you want to counter Adebayo, we have to use the same platform that is using, the same network that is using to spread this, to spread this information. Mm -hmm. We talk about trusted voices, we talk about influencers, we talk about amplifiers. But yeah, these are all in the communities. They are in the other bases, they are in the smaller groups, in the ghettos, they are in all the communities. That's how they spread the message. And that's why it has become popular. Mm -hmm. Because government is not communicating to the public, and journalists also are not communicating to the public. Right. Yes.
Yes. yes, as you want to comment, Christina. Yeah, I would say um, with the media poverty, it has a whole lot. This um, mm. media yeah, that poverty, is a fundamental it problem. has a whole yes. lot to deal, problem, to deal yes. with. Mm -hmm. Why most journalists, mm -hmm. they, they are not, I would not say they spread um, 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 fake news, misinformation or this, but uh, why they are, they are upfront now about their affiliations, why they are not scared to show, because they, 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 they feed them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. once they feed them, mm -hmm. They, they have no option but to amplify these things. So that's where the problem is when it comes to journalists. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the citizen, I think people just believe on um, like a trusted voice in their communities. They look at influential people. To, during um, Ebola, so I was um, in the provinces and I was working, and where the information came from, we had to go back to the, those people to make sure that they give the right information. So when we did with fake news and disinformation and all of these things, mm -hmm. if you say you would be using the expert to talk about these things, the expert, we can come here and talk mm -hmm. a whole lot about mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. But to trust me, Samuel, mm -hmm. we have to go back to where the, that fake information uh, um, came from. We have to educate those people. So what we, in, in in, in Port Loco, mm -hmm. they, 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 these people, they were saying, ah, they are lying. The, the, in fact, the, the oil, if you use the oil of the dead person, mm -hmm. that oil, would, you would use, you would, it, it would eradicate Ebola. Mm. So many people died. Right. So many people died. You know what happened? Mm -hmm. So the people who were there, who were uh, um, selling the, this oil, who were there in the, um, um, the Bondo Bush, who were there in these mm -hmm. places, these were the people that we started talking to, mm -hmm. that this oil is not good. It's spreading Ebola. This is the thing. Mm -hmm. So in the fact, the guys from the attire base, mm -hmm. they are really influential and powerful. Mm -hmm. We had to go to the attire bases. So, John, so this brings me to um, us as journalists. Journalism, I know at first it's all about the 24 hours. Mm -hmm. It's just moving and moving and moving. But now it's about going into the communities. It's mm -hmm. about storytelling. Mm -hmm. News is dead. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say that. Mm -hmm. Storytelling is the new way we should go. Mm -hmm. So when you, storytelling means... I can go into a community and bring, take the experts to them mm -hmm. so that they can ask questions. And when I take the expert to them, there are influential people there. There are trusted voices there who are sitting in front. Who would, so when, when they get this information with the community, so if they say anything that's, that, that's different from what has been taught or what we have told them, you would have people who would say, no, that's not it. So we were doing a town hall when I was with BBC. So we went, and it's about malaria, mm -hmm. the, the, the misinformation the, that, that is spread right, that if you drink beer, you would have mm -hmm. malaria. If you drink, um, um, if you eat too much egg, children are deprived from mm -hmm. protein because of malaria. So when I went there, and I was, and I, the first question I asked, mm -hmm. where do, do you get these kinds of information? And then people say, well, the ones who has um, phone, who listen to radio, or who have connections with other people. And mm -hmm. I ask, who are these people? Well, our, our chiefs, our headmen, these are the people, mm -hmm. yes. They, they, are, they are the ones with phones. They are the ones with all of these, um, they get information from them. And then I asked them, where do you get that, those information? Mm -hmm. one, one of the stakeholders um, stood up and said to me, well, are we, are we, I'm from somebody else. We heard it from someone else. <laughs> and from another true. village, he, he's a friend, he's a closed friend, mm -hmm. and I hold him barely. And I asked, do you know where that friend got that information? He said, well, it's in our culture and our traditions. So it's about picking those, it's about picking those things intentionally mm -hmm. and addressing those things with the right people. Mm -hmm. And these are influential people that have the voice in their communities. Tim, quickly, um, yeah. did the book did the book talk about ways of addressing the crisis? Of course, yes. Yeah. So that, that we mentioned the, the idea of using fire, um, like for, for instance, if it is information. We talk about fact-checking of your information, mm -hmm. but this is for the literate. This is one of the things that mm -hmm. we need to know. Mm -hmm. And, how can, and how can that sink well to the ordinary man who is an illiterate who doesn't know how to read the right? That's another challenge. So the, I, I just told the line of uh, Wimsa. What we need to do is to see how best we can uh, reach these stakeholders. But again, it all boils down whether we have honest politicians. Because I can tell you, if we are, you are to go to these um, stakeholders to disseminate an information which they believe is not in their own interest, because they believe when they send out a mis when they misinform they are misinforming the people, they will get them to vote. 
to vote for their parties. So if you are there to spread a message, the next thing they will do is to find ways and means to counter you because you got them exposed. And they, they, they don't want that. So all these things, you know, it's, uh, it's really very, 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 very tough. But we talk about um, using journalists, which is one. We talk about um, using stakeholders, which, which is uh, another one. And then we also ask people to fact check all information before ever you, 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 you attempt to share it out. Because that's going to also lead to tension. So we bring all these areas as solutions to how we can move against the misinformation or fake news. Mm -hmm. But um, it's all for the illiterate. If, and you, we have to know that. So if we want to reach the people right down there to see how best we can move them from getting, from engaged with these people that are misinforming them, that's another challenge as well. Because you have politicians who are highly dishonest. So what they will do is to use those stakeholders, give them some pittance, and tell them that don't listen to these guys. My party has done X, Y, Z for you guys. So if you are there to tell them that no, don't just listen to what they are telling you. This might lead to tension. The man in the green is your brother. The man in the red is your brother. You need to live like brothers and unite and look for the for the bigger picture. Then one will be there. As, oh, this guy wants to sensitize these people. And the next thing you will you will you will see is they will try to use them against your very self because they know if once you're there. You are not there in their own interest. You are there for the national good, which is something they, are, they, they often found out. You just alluded to what Dr. Musa mentioned. The fact-checking initiatives, just for the few. For the few. So um, going back to how do we address, and when I asked the question about whether or not the book, um, I mean, gives some form of solutions to these crises, to this crisis, did you um, factor in, um, take into consideration that the local people who would not have the time to do fact, to, to, in fact, does, they do not even understand how to go about fact checking um, the information that is in, before them. They just have to. Oh, okay. So you know, you see, this person don't talk this. All you need for do not for run with them. So did you take a look at that and perhaps um, give some form of? recommendations as we, to how we should deal with it. Yeah, we did. That, that's why we talk about open and genuine communication with stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way you can reach those, um, those, those people, those mm -hmm. local people. Right. You know, that, that's just one of the things that we mentioned. Mm -hmm. So uh, 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 then how do we get the information? You've, you've just told us that um, we are, the, the politicians are dishonest. And especially majority, majority of them are dishonest. Now we're we're we headed to the June pools, and at at the at, at the heart of it is their political interest. How do they harness that using whatever tool for them? It's okay. They just want to get what they need or what they want. So how then do we tackle that? How do we get the politicians in the first place who we've 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 accused? of being the pioneers of all of this? Well, this, and that's why I use the word majority. You have a few of them that are very honest. Mm. You get the honest one, and then you partner with them, and then you try to see how best your information can filter through the stakeholders to the ordinary man in the community. Out of curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> I beg not to name names. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I beg not to name names. But there are a few of them that are, that are, that are genuine. Like um, in the Lord, there must be some who are exemption. That is what I'm saying. Go ahead. So you look at them based on their, their actions, their performance. You must get a few that you can do business with. Mm -hmm. And you take these, you unpick those, those few, and then you see we, are, we try to start somewhere without the help of journalists and all the stakeholders, the CMSOs and others, I think we can meet these stakeholders and then we try to see how best we can reach the people with the genuine information through open and the genuine communication tactics. So one way, I'm sorry to come in, no. one way we've been able to do something like that, it's not looking at the genuinity or of that person because politicians is how do you, that's, how do you um, um, check the genuinity mm -hmm. of them. So what we will do is when we have those, so this is what journalists, this, this, this is something that we can do. Mm -hmm. When we have, or when we hear about these things and then they say, oh, well, this politician said this, this politician said this, it's important that we bring that politician. We bring that politician and that politician sings and then we ask, mm. we ask the questions. And then we say, this is this, this is what has been said. And according to this person, mm -hmm. this person said you said this. So we want to know if that is true. 
So if once they deny that they didn't say that, it's a way of catching them, and it's a way of the people also knowing that these people can tell lies as well. So it's very important that we, we, we do not leave gap, especially when it comes to elections. We, we engage constantly. But when we engage, let's make sure that we also engage the, the public. Because most of the information that, that, that is taken, hook, line, and silka, it's from the public. They just believe because they follow. Yes, Dr. Yeah, say what you yeah. <laughs> Information is very important. The process is informed decision making. Decision -making. Yes. And as such, people are in need of it. Mm. But you, we are talking about ensuring that we don't allow the gap to exist. Mm -hmm. So in this process, it's not just reaching out. You have to also use the digital platform. Stakeholders that are concerned, for example, the social media strategy should be evident. That is the Ministry of Information and Communication and the Election Commission, Sierra Leone, and then the Sierra Leone Police and the like. Because these are institutions that are very much strategic in this process. And they have to ensure that they are in all social media platforms providing clarification on whatever that is being presented as misleading, mm -hmm. you know, so that people, first of all, can understand. Say, for example, they have to be in TikTok, mm -hmm. and where possible, they use the local languages, not only English, mm -hmm. you know, and then they make their packages. For example, it's creative for me to sit, and at the back, or my back in TikTok, mm -hmm. I point at things that are false or misleading, and then I talk to the public. Mm -hmm. You know, that we go far and wide. Mm -hmm. Equally so, I'm going to be on Twitter platform, whatever somebody has posted, which I think is wrong, I counter that. Yes. Get on Facebook, get on Instagram, and so forth. We have to be alert because this is what we have to do now. Mm -hmm. But I think it should not be just an institution. Say, for example, Sludge alone or journalists alone doing no. that. No. We have to ensure that where possible, even the bloggers, you know, I mean, as we move now, they are taking lead. Mm. If you look at, you know, what they are receiving now, bloggers are getting, be they are being paid even more than regular mm. journalists right. because they have huge followers. So if such people are not engaged strategically in terms of disseminating accurate, timely, and relevant information towards the election, we just leave them. You know, and then we think they are just doing, you know, a satire or caricature. Mm. But then they are bent on misinforming people. Right. It becomes counterproductive. Mm. So this is why I'm saying, from you know, a um, scientific position, everyone has effects. Mm -hmm. Every platform of social media has effects. In fact, significant effects on this election. So this is why we have to make sure that we, you know, engage stakeholders to be alert so that where possible, they can counter misinformation, disinformation immediately. And then in addition with what you are talking about, reaching out, you know, because the platform is where it has germinated. Yes. So we have to ensure that we hit it there. Right. And then we increase our social conversation where possible, even in religious houses. Because there are people who are so religious that everything about there is religion. So if you cannot reach to them, mm -hmm. you know, in their churches or mosques, you know, you are wasting time. Mm -hmm. So this is where possible that we have to actually have what we call all efforts mm -hmm. to ensure that we engage the people. Remember, as we get closer to the election, people have already cropped press releases alerts. Yes. They are ready with position statements, press yes. statements. And then at the end of the day, even those who want to respond, mm -hmm. they may be confused. You will see people writing press release for press release. You know, so then at the end of the day, we are yeah. expecting them to provide another content in response to that. Right. So this is where possible, we think, not only engaging the journalists, mm -hmm. you know, but we have to also prepare other actors and capacitate them where possible. Yeah. You know, because capacitating them because. is what is very strategic. Yeah. Not that they may not be interested, but they lack the capacity. So I think capacitating them through training, coaching, mentoring, we also help the situation. Because as we move along, every election we are now going to have more situation rooms. And some situation rooms are going to be the, <laughs> the problem as we move along in terms of misinformation, mm -hmm. disinformation, and malinformation. Some, some will be specifically for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 question I want to ask yeah. now. Yeah. We, we, we've, 
the experts have told us that um, the democracy we have in Sierra Leone is one that is fledgling. And um, looking at that reality, if it's anything to go by, and with practices over time, what threat does this pose to the nation's peace and its democracy as we uh, go? Uh, it's, huge. Mean, it, to, to it's huge. It's huge, Samuel. It's huge, Samuel. Mm -hmm. If you look at what happened on August 10, mm -hmm. that is a typical example of how hate online right. was transported offline. Mm -hmm. And you look at the casualties police yeah. officers, public property, civilians, mm -hmm. all dead. And you look at all the other incidents. They are caused, and I think, I think we need to bring in hate speech mm -hmm. into the conversation, right. which is also in incitement, mm -hmm. inciting people to go out. And, um, and, and do things that they, because of the information that you have fed them, mm -hmm. the wrong information that you have fed them, that is what has made them to take those judgments. Mm -hmm. So that's why it, it is important for people to have credible information to make informed decisions. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is, that is, that is basically how that is going to happen. There is going to be violence. There is going to be mistrust in the, in the elections body, in the whole process, and even in the, in the, in the results. Mm -hmm. And so that, that is what we need to, to do. Tony has started talking about the, the approach. It's a collective approach. Mm -hmm. Social media is where it is germinated. But social media is a small pool. Eh? It's a small percentage of people in social media. Yeah. Yes, you should look at how, how, the, how the information travels. Mm -hmm. And so it is the responsibility of the political parties themselves, the political leaders, to commit themselves to ensure that they, 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 they dissociate themselves mm -hmm. and condemn every potential misinformation or hate speech or, 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 or disinformation out there mm -hmm. that, that, will cause, that, will cause, that will undermine the electoral process. Mm -hmm. The churches and the mosques, the schools, the, the structure you talk about for, for Ebola and for even COVID, that yes. structures, we should not underestimate them. Those yeah. community structures, we should not underestimate them in terms of communication. Mm -hmm. That is where the, the, the messages are, are, are reinforced. Yeah. And so we need, to, we need to use that structure again to pass on the information. That is how I think my message it goes down, filters to the least community. That is how they do. There are people who are dedicated to package this information and put it into segments and then go to the communities, gather people, put on Bluetooth speaker and play for them to understand. And then the amplifiers and the trusted voices run with it. And, the, and, and people, and, and they, come, they continue to reinforce those messages. Mm. And that's how they, they form their opinions and they take action. Mm. So to counter them, we have to use the same approach mm. and use our local structures. They're very important because the bulk of the population and the rural areas, they're illiterate. Mm -hmm. They depend on radio for the information. That's why our, our own platform to counter this information on the NDI platform mm -hmm. and the and the iVerify, we also do it with them in, in conjunction with the, the RN platform, uh, the independent network mm -hmm. platform, because we know that the bulk of the population still rely on radio to get information. So once we are embarking on debunking this this um, this fake news and this information, we also have to create a special source of information, of credible information for the public, where they can go. So this is where we can go to get credible information. This is where we can go to cross-check claims. This is where we can go to ask questions, and, they will, uh, and, 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 and we'll get the, the response that we want. That is the radio, and that is the, the, this, this, um, this platform that we have, we, have, we have created. So it's a collective effort. And the election monitoring bodies, they have to be forthcoming with the information mm -hmm. in these elections. If they don't do that, then... Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, definitely. Yeah, because that's want, 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 that's want to have the information, the police want to have the information. We should not just be debunking. No. We have to pre-bunk. Eh? Put the information out there so that people have less time to manipulate it. Mm. And again, if we don't manage, the other effect will be voter apathy. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, people will deliberately, you know, be afraid. Be afraid will get out. Because and that's yes, the intention. Will put out a message, anybody will put out a message and say, don't go out to vote yeah, today. Don't go yes, out to vote we are going to come out. You know, so this happens. is where yeah. we have to see that. So it is huge. Just, the political parties, they need to come out. They need to come out and talk uh, to the people. Because people believe in the that. The supporters believe that. Mm -hmm. Which is more like being responsive. But we have to take proactive measures to ensure, you know, that we manage the space effectively. Mm -hmm. And so this is where, for example, I said it should not just be one sector, but it has to be intersectoral commitment. And we have to complement our efforts mm -hmm. to see that, you know, we, I mean, get everybody alert, mm -hmm. and then we help people to understand, you know, what the situation is. And those that need the capacity, yeah. we build their capacity as early as possible. Because I mean, in media, we have what we call all-powerful effects. All powerful. Somebody seated somewhere, we argue that social media has not got that all-powerful effect. Yeah, exactly. It is dependent it is depend on the situation. The situation. You know, remember, uh, Sam, there was a night 
at the time of Ebola, somebody was moving around, say, wash with wash salt, with salt yeah. you know, yeah. and then you, and, yeah. I think and 88 percent. Yeah. 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 And then yeah. 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 we did not even process that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was just about time it. for you to save life. Shout out to people. Shout out to people. So that was hypodermic. So we believe that the tendency is still there. You know, and we are getting creativity every day on the platform. So every channel is important. Every channel is important. We have to make it so over time, we've had phrases like, we have a gullible public. Indeed. Indeed. And we have unscrupulous people who manipulate that gullible public. Always. But then you have those who advocate for democracy who will tell you, democracy presupposes freedom of speech, freedom of opinion, and all of that, without giving boundaries to those rights. So how then do we understand that? So if you advocate for democracy, you can't tell me, say, I'm right for talk. I don't know who's side for stop, not for talk just to continue for talk, then what's the effect of that? <coughs> giving me that right without giving any form of boundary, where does that stop? Well, Sam, coming back to even the media, mm -hmm. the media model is, is theoretical. Mm -hmm. You have what we call authoritative, authoritarian, or mm -hmm. libertarian, yeah. but the two existed to social responsibility. Right. You know, that the media should be free or should be socially responsible. responsible. And then you have freedom ends where, you know, the right of another individual will start. If that is the case, then we have to understand that every right has responsibility. In this case, we are free to say what we want to say. Mm -hmm. But it should not be detrimental to the society we live. Mm -hmm. And then also, it should not also trespass the rights of others. So in that case, I think is more all about responsible citizenry. Mm. And this is where civic comes in, all right? So I think um, before now, the National Commission for Democracy and the Nas National Commission for Civic Education, is that, is mm -hmm. that how they call it? Right. Yeah. They would have engaged the public, mm -hmm. you know, to understand what is political conversation mm -hmm. that we can have in civility, mm -hmm. you know, because we have to ensure that as civilized society, we have to be very civil enough mm. in terms of reaching out or meeting people. This is where, for example, the use of social media, you know, mm -hmm. because I still argue that, I mean, it's not just about the abuse. Mm. There are significant, important use of social media, especially at a time like this. Mm. For example, in South Africa, the election, they had what, I, what they call I votes. Mm -hmm. I vote was used to ensure that people register and then go out to vote. Mm -hmm. In Sierra Leone, we are talking about I verify. Mm -hmm. So meaning the internet technology is helping us, mm -hmm. you know, to use so many initiatives or strategies to get people involved in politics and participate. Mm -hmm. More or less, you are talking about genuinity of politicians. No, politics is not about ethics. Politics is about tactics. Mm -hmm. So wherever, you know, they think, Right. You know, and whatever they think they can use, they, can they use have to, to use yeah, it to their advantage. To advantage. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is where, for example, we monitoring society, <coughs> we always advise people. You know, politicians are about what they want to do. I think last week, Sunday, mm -hmm. was it last week? Mm -hmm. We are talking about manifesto, right. you know, not coming out. Mm -hmm. So I think social media can now be one of the easy platforms that could be used to do so. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, you reach out with mere flyers of your manifesto. It may be very bulky, but just give us three pages mm. of what the manifesto is about. Yeah. Break it down. Put, yes. Break it down in and then case. get that to TikTok mm. and sit like this and point. Item one, this is what I will do. Mm. Item two, I will do this. Mm. Item I three, I will. People keep following. Yes. Instead of creating insightful contents, mm. you know, talking about mm. hate. Hatredness or attack or you know tribalism, tribalism you name them. Okay. So I think we have to help them to understand. Okay. You have been in governance. This is the moment to test change stories. Mm -hmm. What are the things that have changed? Yeah. And you can use TikTok, mm -hmm. you know, Facebook mm -hmm. to tell us your change stories. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to ensure that we encourage them to yes. be more creative, mm -hmm. responsive, and responsible in using social media. Yeah, we, need, right. we need to get them to talk, to talk. Let them talk among, <laughs> among right. them yes, and, and talk to the public. Yes, and as well. they could practice yes, yes. duty of care as well. Yes, you know? exactly. mm -hmm. Because we, duty of care in mm -hmm. journalism means, I know that this is true. Mm -hmm. But if this can destroy the public, if this can destroy somebody, then I ought not to do it. Mm. Conflict sensitive. Yes. yes, you have to be. You have yeah. to be. You have All to right. Be. Have um, to. Quickly, we have to go um, and talk to some of. Um, 
practitioners, those in, in, in the space, um, uh, one of our reporters went out and sought the views of some journalists and um, who are bloggers to get their opinion on what the implications of fake news, misinformation, and disinformation are. Let's, let's now um, take those voxes and we'll be right back. Well, fake news, misinformation has a lot of um, pitfalls, right? Um, in the first place, it has a tendency to debar democracy in any country. It has a tendency to debar democracy in any country, you know? Because and, um, we've made a lot of progresses as a country. We've gone too far. But fake news, when they are not verified, they have been propagated by people we call citizen journalists. It has a tendency to create war in the country. It creates war. It will split, you know, the ethnicity of a country. Fake news can debar development in a country. And it has a tendency again to make other political parties or other politicians feel aggrieved. Even if when they are not aggrieved, even if when they the wrong thing is not being done to them, but they will feel aggrieved because of fake news. It has a tendency to even allow other politicians to resist the outcome of an election because of fake news, misinformation. It has so many bad effects in the country, right? It has a tendency to create war, to devour democratic tenets, fake news. It has the tendency to make citizens resist the reality on the ground, fake news. Misinformation, of course, can lead to disaster, catastrophe in the country. So those are very, very important. So as a responsible government, I am craving the indulgence on this particular government to pay more attention on the conventional media, that is the traditional media, rather than the citizen journalism. I'm seeing a lot of government functionaries, I will not name them here, for competent reasons, right? They've been paying attention to bloggers. I'm not saying bloggers should not be and then promoted. Bloggers should not be helped, but they should be guided because they don't have the ethics. They are not governed by a regulatory body. Like for the conventional media, it has been governed by the Independent Media Commission, where we have our media ethics, our protocols to uphold. If you have found one thing, then our institution will take you to the IMC for disciplinary action. So therefore, before you publish any information, you need to fact check the information to make sure that that information is relevant, it is authentic, it is truthful. Rather than sharing any information you get from the social media, anybody can go to social media and write whatever he or she feels to write. So you as a responsible journalist, you as a conventional journalist, you have the obligation, you have the ethos, right, to verify those information. You need to get one side, then the other side, then if possible the third side, so that it keeps you abreast you know, with happenings around the country. So that is very, very important. So it is high time we control the mismanagement or the spread of misinformation. It has a tendency to devour our democracy. And we are coming from, we've come from what? 11 years, senseless level war. So we are not hoping, we are not wishing to go back where we've come from. So therefore, please, I'm begging, I'm pleading to even colleagues in the conventional media, don't be excited when you are doing your reporting. You are not part of the news. You are reporting the news. Don't be, don't, don't be hasty. Don't take a hasty decision. Don't be urged to break the news. Before you break the news, make sure the news is authentic. As media professionals, we have the responsibility to be very conscious about, you know, um, conflict-sensitive reporting. Don't report things that will flare up tensions, that will flare up um, 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 emotions, you know, conflicts, violence, as the case may be. So, as media professionals, we have the responsibility. As for me, I've covered several elections. You know, I covered the 2022 election. I covered the um, 20, uh, 2007 election. I also covered um, the 2012 and also the 2018, you know in different forms. But I know that us, as media professionals, we have a responsibility. And that responsibility is to keep the peace. We they do best all the time. For make sure they will report issues based on accuracy, based on fact, and based on cogency. We also are aware that Misinformation 
and fake news get the potential for even polarize, for even create distrust in the public media. So therefore, we not engage in anything we will create that kind of situation for, for we people. So as media practitioners, we are also encouraging our fellow colleagues to also follow suit, to do things that are right, so that as we move towards the June 24th, 2023 presidential and general elections, that we can have or bear in mind that the peace that we enjoy in this country, that peace can only be protected by how we do our work and how we portray. The things with the green can work, green can problem, and we all know say, over the years, we're going to get problems with challenges in this country. And of course, one effort for uh, business are going to plenty. So we're not going to go, so we don't come out. The customer market say, we get a war away in a local law, when a war away, don't bring Poland in the country. We don't get so many challenges are going to say, this election will come. We as professionals, we we'll always say, each and every sector for young and talk of peace. Because peace, they make this election get that kind of stability. But the only thing I say, all the sectors are going for bring peace. For always bring the actual change and make one more happen or one more happen in the future. Because when I say election, as a democratic country, we get the principles them where the different different sectors they will do. For example, the government is the on clock five years on the 4th of April. Probably is now in a sec at the country. But now look at one thing. Neck, where they conduct the election. The police, where they manage security, protect life and property. PPRC, where they regulate all the political parties them for the, uh, the one they were in the German name. I believe say, everybody getting its possibility. And if anyone gets where to come out by any particular thing, we will get bad election. So the old told is say, what if we bring peace? Let PPRC listen all political uh, parties and complain them. And they make them very unique. We will make nobody not get problem with the initial they take. Then next, people will come for this ID card of that country. Then look at the kind of other political party them. They see them say, oh, no, fine, tune them. If there is people no solve them, then they solve them. The police and social them, then they for man security. All right, um, those were views from some journalists and, um, well, mainstream journalists and citizens, well, professional journalists and citizens journalists. Um, they've been able to express their, their opinions on the, the, the implications of fake news, misinformation, and disinformation. But just before I get um, your, your, your reactions to those things, let's um, quickly uh, move over to Studio 2 and join Sally Fuchiano Kamara to run through some of the messages um, our followers have been sending on the Facebook page. Sally Fu, good evening. Thank you so much, uh, Samuel. Uh, we have close to 100 messages so far, but as Samuel said earlier, we will just take the messages that are tailored to the topic of today. And the first one we'll take today is uh, from Ronald Bradford Igniter's uh, George Stone, who says, uh, and this is for the Sludge president, he said, do Sludge have guidelines that are supposed to be followed? What measures have Sludge put in place to hold those found wanting to account? And uh, Samuel Bangura also say, AYV on Sunday, thanks for this program. Fake news on social media is dangerous. It can destroy a whole nation by telling a little lie, uh, will blow a fire and people start to fight and killing each other and destroy properties. And this is not the AYV Samuel Wise. This is another Samuel Bangura. And uh, Abu Bakar Rashid says, fake news is everywhere. Even Western media do pass fake news. I don't think we should blame politicians or whosoever uh, information is like food. People go in search of it. The problem is how we verify those information. Also, we should differentiate between propaganda and misinformation. And John Kanu says, journalists, our journalism is dead in Sierra Leone. The journalists are very dishonest, and they have been bought by the government. Uh, Eddie Grant is saying, 
majority of Sierra Leoneans lack the reading uh, mentality, the reason why they are easily manipulated by fake news. And uh, Raymond Cargo says, traditional news have lost innovative ways to capture the attention of audiences, and audiences have lost trust. That is the space social media influencers have captured. What is Sludge doing to counter this and restore the full role of traditional media? And uh, Stephen Nyali is saying, that's why we should push for education. According to research, fake news mostly work for individuals with limited education and knowledge. Educated individuals are criti ask critical questions and check before believing. And uh, Ronald Bradford again, perhaps if punitive measures uh, were put in place with hefty fines, then maybe those in the habits with, uh, will fact check their information and sources. And uh, Janice Alex says, the reason for that gap, for my opinion, is that the mainstream media has not been honest and realistic with the people. And uh, Ibrahim Socially Tula says, the main opposition in Sierra Leone has been feeding its supporters with false news, all in the name of bad politicking. And uh, Yaya Kemo Mansoure, to what extent has the cybersecurity helped in bringing people who misinformed on social media to book, especially when it was much talked on by the current government? To me, it's just more harm than good. Oh, Salon. We are good in making laws, but they are kept under the carpet. Uh, the police, ECSL, the media, and the judiciary should be ready to do the need food, especially for this election. So, and uh, the next message is coming from Eddie Grant. Bloggers are also spreading fake and misleading news. A huge number of them are engaged in copy and paste they don't fact check information before posting. And uh, Ibrahim Socialist Tula, fake information and misinformation has caused bad things in our society. And Ayo Taylor, the journalists in Sierra Leone are politically affiliated to some party. They are not objective. And uh, Osfren Kamara says, the information overload of social media creates an overwhelming, chaotic environment due to emerging technologies that create comments such as deep faking, boost disinformation. The actors in it exploit the cognitive vulnerabilities. Election misinformation and disinformation reduce the satisfaction with democracy by consumers of these contents. And the last message I will take for today is uh, from Lamin Denke. Fake news become prominence on social media is because institutions responsible for giving out information fail to relate with the public. For instance, ECSL, PPRC, and the, judi the judiciary, and the police. So these are uh, the messages that are in line with today's discussion, and back to you, Samuel. Thank you very much, um, Salifu Chero Kamara, for giving us some of the messages um, that were sent in by our followers. So um, you, earlier on, Isina, you were talking about, um, I mean, presenting the news in a form of storytelling can actually capture. And one of the messages that Salifu went through mm -hmm. speaks to how we've lost innovative ways to capture the audiences and in return audiences have lost trust in the media. So how then do we, so that, so that, so that space we've lost, according to that text. Mm -hmm. So how then do we, I mean, go again and recapture that space? 
Well, it's about going in depth. You know, with the 24 hours news, so um, you can't, you, you're on a constant uh, move. You don't stop. So um, that's where, we, um, 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 you know, with citizen journalists, um, they would they would fill all those gaps. Mm -hmm. So there was a particular model that I really liked. That um, as much as journalists, um, um, they we we feel like we own this um, communication space, or we used to feel like we own right. this space. But now we are lo we are losing touch. And then I think it's now time to collaborate. Mm -hmm. So storytelling is about following stories over time. Mm -hmm. So not doing it once and then you forget about it, you jump to the next story. Mm -hmm. How do you go back to those stories? Or how do you find the human side of those stories? So say you're telling a story about elections or, mm -hmm. uh, or dis um, um, distrust in elections and something. So uh, you you can easily, uh, how it's uh, happened mm -hmm. or how it's happening is that you go and ask the person, what's your concern about elections, um, um, distrust in, in elections? What's mm -hmm. your this, what's your that? But instead of doing that, you can go and meet someone who has uh, maybe witnessed five or six ele elections to let that person talk about how it was before. What 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 are the difference? How how this can be implemented now? How this can, the lessons learned? How this can it can be taken into another dimension? Mm -hmm. You go also talk to people in the communities where they hardly get news. You know, where they, 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 they had difficulties in voting, mm -hmm. how that made them feel. feel. And it, you can put all of those together mm -hmm. and tell a story to appeal to people. But, you know, just doing, um, we all used to do that because I've been in the media for at least over a decade. Mm -hmm. So I know how it is when you just cover the story and leave it. You cover the story and leave it. So it's about also um, not all making it very in intentional mm -hmm. about having journalists that follow stories over time, make sure that these stories, as they unfold, we get different angles of mm -hmm. these stories and making sure that people, we get them alongside uh, with the story. So most times we tend to just bring in, um, uh, how do I say, experts to talk about issues. Why not bring people who they have lived experiences? Mm -hmm. That's how we tell stories better. So if I have had a, a situation in my community wherein and some, someone shared fake news and that affected our community, there were fighting and there were distrust and everything, that's a good community to, to, do, to, to, to do a story about um, 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 fake news, how it can affect mm -hmm. the general public. So you start very small and it gravitates towards the bigger, the bigger um, population or mm -hmm. the bigger picture. That's how we can tell better stories. But let's not just depend on going to press conferences, going to uh, um, how do I say, going to um, all those meetings, those um, politicians, mm -hmm. they call you, they, they, they give you their agenda, and you just take it and put it on air. So, and that's one thing. But I, I think one of the um, um, senders, I, I don't agree with him, mm -hmm. I, because he, he he's saying that jo journalists, all journalists, are, they're, they're, dis they're dishonest, they're not, <laughs> yeah, they're not realistic. I, I would not say that. I have practiced for all, this is my, like 15 years in the media. I started as, as nine, I was 19. But I would say that we have um, 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 journalists who are falling off the bag wagon. But now I always ask this question. We are putting our life out there. Overseas, we have um, in, in citizens who are willing to give their life to protect, to safeguard the journalists. Mm -hmm. We, our citizens, can you safeguard um, the journalist, or uh, do you have? Uh, do you feel like within you, you can stand up and, and go out and say, these journalists, we have trustworthy journalists, and if they, we, they are doing the right thing, they are supposed to be protected. Can they do that? Mm. So it is not all on us. It is also on the people. So the quality of citizens will determine um, the, the, the quality of journalism because they, they kind of like influence mm. the, the journalists. So this is huge. So it's not all on us. It's mostly on the citizens as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 go ahead. Ours is not an enlightened society. Go on. So definitely these things will happen. People yeah. will misunderstand how we work, mm. what we mm. do, and mm. those sort of things. Yeah. But, I, but I, want to disagree, I want to disagree with um, the, 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 text the, text the message that... Um, Journalists have not uh, taken advantage, uh, have not been creative in mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes. innovative. Fake news is not all here, like he said. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's all over. It's a, it's a, it, what has happened is that before now, the traditional media, before we want to have a feedback from the public, mm -hmm. they have to write letters. Mm -hmm. Letters to the editor, 
and then you publish your letters to, mm -hmm. to, to some, and, and talk about some things or contribute to opinion letters and they publish it for you. Now the space has increased. Social media has brought about an increase in the space. Mm -hmm. that's, we, that's, that's what organizations like Large are advocating for. Free expression. We want to increase the space. Mm -hmm. That's what social media has brought. And because the space is so huge now, everybody has access to it. And they can do whatever they want. They can express their opinion, whatever they want. Sometimes with recklessness, sometimes with with, uh, with some amount of responsibility. Mm -hmm. So that is not our problem. That is not, that is not because of us, of, of us journalists. We have access to it and do it. And the decline in the trust for journalists is not only here. It's all over the world. There is a general decline because of fake news and misinformation, disinformation taking over the digital space. And there is a general decline in the trust for, for, for legacy media. So that's not a problem epically as a civilian law. Mm -hmm. So that is the context. And people generally from time memorial, they, they have appetite for sensational, sensationalism. They have appetite for bad news. Mm. Man bites dog. Eh? Dog, <laughs> bites, dog bites man. man. It's not news. Man bites dog. It's news. If it, not, if, if, if it bleeds, then it's news. Yes. See, so that's, that yeah. is the appetite of people all over the world. So don't no, no blame us who say journalists are, journalists are not to blame. We, we, we do things in, in a professional manner because mm. if you look at the process, how we, how we gather news, mm -hmm. how we write news, and how we disseminate it, then you know. The, the kind of things that we go through, the kind of the kind of ordeal that we go through mm. to get the information out there to you, the correct information, accurate information to help you make informed decisions. Mm. So I, I don't think we should blame journalists about, uh, about that. What uh, the president of Wimsa was emphasizing, we call it advocacy journalism. Mm. You know, you know, she's yearning for advocacy journalism, which is not just about inform, but inform and influence. Mm. Yes. Influence in the way that you want it. Yeah, you know, bring about change, yes. You, you know, that impact. even when we are now packaging for the elections, we must first of all believe in democracy. We must use that belief day, they are then to see that um, we manage voter expectations, even to accept mm -hmm. the outcome of the elections, mm -hmm. and trust the institutions that are, you know, in the process to ensure that we have free, fair elections at the end of the day. So that being the case, we as journalists who are delivering or creating the content, we should approach it, you know, in the context of advocacy journalism. Mm -hmm. But then, if we just choose to inform people, you know, without necessarily preparing their minds in the way that we want it, mm -hmm. then we might be missing certain things. But the issue of fake news is nothing new. Mm -hmm. Why do you think Trump was suspended on Twitter? Mm -hmm. You know, at the time of the elections mm -hmm. in U.S. Mm -hmm. You know, so many start from where we refer to as the baseline for democracy. So coming out to yes, Sierra Leone, yes, democracy that mm -hmm. is always described as being fragile, mm -hmm. we will now see that uh, we are going to copy what is happening. Mm -hmm. But basically, if we decide as journalists mm -hmm. to ensure that we work on advocacy journalism so that we can also package behavioral change, mm -hmm. change of mindsets, mm -hmm. you know, in our reportage, mm -hmm. that can help the situation. Mm -hmm. With that, in fact, that can help reduce the concept of regionalism, ethnicity, you know, and then ensure that also we don't just inform people, but we also educate them Education. around the yes. process mm -hmm. so that that, that can help mean, manage their yes. expectations. Mm -hmm. Or else, yeah. now everybody, if you ask, you know, there is going to be, if you ask party A, there is not going to be any runoff, mm -hmm. party B, no mm -hmm. runoff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if there is any runoff at the end now, we don't want to be cut off. What we believe in in the process is that people should understand, you know, who are the actors, what they are doing, mm -hmm. and how they should respond, you know, to the process as we move along. Mm -hmm. That's all we have in Sierra Leone, for example, and the interests of Sierra Leone should be above all political parties. Mm -hmm. That should also be seen in our editorials, mm -hmm. we as journalists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like she that said earlier on, that journalists now have uh, size or position in politics. Yes, mm -hmm. these are political animals. Mm -hmm. We don't take that away from them. <laughs> but they have chosen to be um, public servants in the sense that they are mm -hmm. serving the public, right. guided by the IMC code of practice, mm -hmm. which emphasizes fairness, balance, accuracy, relevance, and the like. Mm -hmm. Mong told you that people like trivialized information, sensational news, yeah. yes, gossip stories, and the like. But then that cannot take us away from our moral mm -hmm. responsibility. Mm -hmm. She was talking about media poverty, yes, I mean, but then information poverty also is there. Mm -hmm. So we have to bear that in mind, you know, <laughs> that um, How to strike the balance. You know, what we need to do is that mm -hmm. journalists have responsibility to fulfill 
as far as this election is concerned. Mm -hmm. And then also civil society, we expect them also to give support mm -hmm. where possible mm -hmm. and work with journalists. Mm -hmm. Political parties mm -hmm. also, they need to do the same. George and then and also, the you know, the, the government, the government, you know, Everybody should also ensure mm -hmm. that they work with, you know, all the stakeholders yeah. to ensure that we save Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very important mm -hmm. for us because, I mean, when you go to media theories, we even say those who have lies to tell, is an opportunity for them to tell that lies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Failing to hear that lies, you might not even know what is truthful. truthful. You know, but then at this moment now, that critical analysis, <laughs> you understand? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. if you cannot yeah. just say, Samuel, yeah. you cannot just say we erase misleading information entirely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. until yeah. people know what is them. misleading, they may yeah. not judge what is leading. Yeah. 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 So when it's misleading, you have to have the correct information to give them. So when they take it out, give them the correct information. Yeah. So to add to, uh, to add to the, yeah. to the conversation around advocacy journalism. Mm -hmm. Journalism is strange. It's dynamic. Right. The media is dynamic. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so before now, we were told that uh, journalists have to be impartial. Eh? Mm -hmm. But sometimes you can be partial. Mm -hmm. eh? For favor, public good. In favor, for example, of, of women issues, mm -hmm. and supporting women in elections, right. yeah, making them, giving them enough representation, or giving them appropriate coverage and, and, and this kind of things. You can mm -hmm. do that for, for, for PWDs. You can be biased in favor of certain people. Mm -hmm. That is the work of the media, because they are powerless. Mm. So, you, so you be the voice of the voiceless. So yes, Tim, let me quickly hear that. Mm. You, yeah, your comments. I think um, the entire thing is centered around the opening our game in terms of professionalism. As journalists, we are, we, are, we, are, we are told the doc is here. We are told that we need to be even-handed in executing our profession. Mm -hmm. And then this is the most important time that we need to up our game. Mm -hmm. Because taking into cognizance some of the rankings, international rankings that you rightly mm -hmm. mentioned, then I think we need to be more even-handed by, by projecting the interest of the country first, ahead of all other interests. We know, yes, you can be partisan. You, can, you, you have your own personal interest. But it comes when there is peace. If there is instability, then even your own personal interest is at stake. Mm -hmm. So once you have that in your head, and you know there is a, the bigger picture is mm -hmm. about peace and instability in your own country, and I think we just need to be professional, especially mm -hmm. at a time when we are receiving these odd rankings as against what we want, which is, which is the peace. So we need to change our, our mindset. We need to focus and then be highly professional in whatever thing that we are doing, especially when it comes in terms of executing our profession towards these elections. Let us be very, very um, objective. Let us be very, very patriotic. And whatever thing that you write, write it and ensure that you do it with, uh, with an, with, with, uh, by trying to be even-handed. Mm. Uh, so, so we've talked about how the space um, that gives life to fake news, m misinformation, disinformation, and social media. Mm -hmm. But then how can the mainstream media the, the, the TV stations, the radio stations, the, the newspaper houses, how can they utilize, take advantage of the digital space or social media space? So that at the end of the day, if there's something breaking, if there's news breaking, AYV, for example, which is it on TikTok, on Instagram, it's that already. So we, we, we're not reacting or going to counter what has been put out by others who tend to well, who are perceived to own the space at this point in Sierra Leone. So how do we get to that point where we encourage the traditional media outlets to take advantage and own that space? So um, most of us, mm -hmm. at, at least I started, um, when I started working for AYV, mm -hmm. we used cassette. Mm -hmm. That's the, it was AYV radio. Right. We used the cassette in mm -hmm. One day I went to Dwight Neal and said, I am not using this again. And they gave me th that, those tiny ones. Mm -hmm. So um, um, why I'm mentioning that mm -hmm. is we have come so far. Right. We cannot drop. Media literate. So there are lots of um, newspapers, radio mm -hmm. stations, and televisions. Um, they, we are, I know we are um, most, if you are over 30 or 40, mm -hmm. it's hard for you to like immerse yourself on, uh, to know the, the, the digital platforms, to know how it's been used, mm -hmm. to know how to get information, to know how to, 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 to check. Imagine there are clicks and uh, um, clicks and um, um, bots, there are, there are trolls, there are, there, there are fake websites online. Mm. So how do we identify these things? It's about immersing ourselves, making sure that mm. we get all on board, making sure that we are digital literate enough 
to understand so that people who are doing, the ones who are doing that, they are really literate. They are experts in, in, in selling fake information and everything. We have to be experts too as journalists mm. to be able to um, combat um, um, disinformation, misinformation, and even the public as well. Mm. Now, say for for example, you you, you are um, a, a citizen, and then some um, a website named Electoral Commission mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or, um, is popping up, and they have thousands of um, they have thousands of likes mm -hmm. and everything. One, you have to make sure that you look for spelling mistakes. Mm. These are signs because um, that we cannot have two electoral commission on the same platform, so they will have to spell it differently. <laughs> so these are the kinds of things that you have to look for mm. when you are you are you are uh, um, trying to pick out the faults or trying to pick out that there is there is some sort of um, 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 misinformation and there is some sort of dishonesty mm. in this particular page. And there are bots and trolls as well. Where um, um, and bots and trolls, they are the ones who would like like they would that would be a post, mm. and it's well liked on social media and people like to follow likes right. and people like to follow all these things on social media. These are the things that are changing, that are taking all of this. So we have to be cognizant as journalists. Mm -hmm. and to be honest, we have to go, we have to trends, be digital. Let us try. I know it's hard if you're above 50 and you've been, you've, you, you've been used to, yeah, you've been used to um, 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 writing on a piece of paper or you've been used to just um, t um, doing things um, like um, 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 without technology. Mm. You have to gravitate towards it. Mm. Well, she yes. was more or less talking about the technology the side technology of things. Yeah. 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 And yeah. about um, the from... context is like what you are asking to mm -hmm. take the space. Yes. space we really yeah. have to be collaborative. Yeah. Because say, for example, the event is happening in Pujeung. Mm -hmm. AYV has a reporter there. Mm -hmm. But then there is SLBC. Mm -hmm. You understand? And then what we have, you know, um, people from spreading false information or misleading information. And how can AYV, you know, with good reach, can easily get that information? In Sierra Leone, we are yet really to get what we call news agency. That could be digital, where you have all forms of news content available, be it text, video, graphic, animation, and the like. So that we might even have what we call 24 hours news channels mm -hmm. in Sierra Leone, real time, we are far from that for now. But if we don't have that at the moment, then we have to be very collaborative. Mm -hmm. So that at the end of the day, we might not actually, you know, starve our listeners, viewers, because we don't have reporters mm -hmm. there. You know, so this is where, for example, the IRN is just one network to ensure that they get information, you know, deploy reporters on election day, for example, so that they can feed, you know, the hub with information right around. But again, there are other partners or networks that are not within that network. So we think that moving towards the election now, we have to get collaboration, collaboration yeah. so that we may collaborate and support each other, each other. with real information, mm. which we can use to counter fake or misleading information. Remember, I told you that as we get closer, people already have information Templates. in readiness. Templates. They have Templates. So all they want to do now is to supply. Mm. But then if we can always be alert to provide alternative explanation, presentation, that can you know deflate what they have, mm -hmm. then we are in space to protect or save the nation. Mm -hmm. There the strategy lies. Mm -hmm. Secondly, also is that um, she was talking about the knowledge, I mean the technology, and then the knowledge of the technology. Mm -hmm. Again, also we have to adopt it. That is the situation. Mm -hmm. You have the knowledge, but if you cannot adopt it, there will be challenge. Yes. Say, for example, she was talking about recording devices and the like. I mean. We are now getting to a point that as long as you are a journalist, well-known, almost every minute or hour you expect yourself to be added to WhatsApp groups, <laughs> willing or not. <laughs> and when you go there, there are WhatsApp groups that are created with single editorial that is uniform. Yes. We are here for this purpose. For us now, we understand what is social engineering. Mm -hmm. Social media can also create what we call connective logic. Mm -hmm. Connect the minds, play on the minds, mm -hmm. and ensure that you keep them intact. Exactly. So if you come with that mind, including you, when you are added here, they expect that they are manipulating your mind. Right. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. And then, there in set groups, you get all hor horrible 
information. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, about who is doing where, what is happening there. And then you get people in conversation, even from, you know, the other part of the globe. What do we do as journalists? Mm. Are you going to intercept? Are you going to tell them that what you are doing here is wrong? Are you going to abandon them? Then, then, then they become suspicious of you. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, the digital risk is also mm -hmm. very serious here. Right. So this is where, for example, like I was talking about, you know, adapting the technology mm. also is very important. How are we going to save our heads? Mm. How are we going to save our credibility? Mm -hmm. You know, at mm. every point in time. Mm. On Facebook, it's easy for me to post what I want. Mm. And also remove people not to tag me. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So as we move now, you can agree with me, except you close that. But people want to tag you because you have huge followers. Evidently. You know, so now, I think uh, Sludge, the IMC, civil society, Ministry of Information and Communication, even the Australian police, mm -hmm. and then the election How about you the, you, you, the academic portals? Well, you know, the academia, <laughs> we are, we are, I mean, it's very important what yes. you have asked, yes. you yes. know. First of all, it is our business yes. to remind them yeah. about realities yeah. and yeah. effects. Exactly. Right. Otherwise, mm -hmm. scenarios. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For example, all we are doing now is managing the peace, mm -hmm. okay? But it is our responsibility to tell them about the TRC. That, al that alone can remind them about our ugly past. Yeah. It is our responsibility to tell them about the special courts, right. the purpose for which it was established, yeah. to fight against impunity. Mm -hmm. That if there are people who are going to do certain things, irrespective of their position today, you understand, eh? they may be held accountable mm -hmm. at some point in time. That is academic. To tell them also about the media effects, the platforms are what are very attractive. Mm -hmm. So people are carried away by the devices. Mm -hmm. But then we have to advise them also about likely effects in terms of generating content. So the academics, we are very important in this process. We are only constrained in terms of support. Donors can support the other entities I have called. But donors hardly support academia in terms of intervention of this nature. Uh, so this uh, is where. Just before you come, not saying that context. Yeah, you context. Speak, what if you are, what if you are accused? I, I mean, as an academic potter, for example, you are being accused now of um, molding some of those who are creating the problems within this space. No, there is defence for that. <laughs> <laughs> what we <laughs> give them? No, we give them. Right. Crit, we, we give them critical mind mm -hmm. and make them critical faculty. You understand? <laughs> so leaving them in the markets, you understand, is their business now to navigate their way. Yeah, so right. so okay. in society, we expect society to absorb them positively, mm -hmm. but we prepare them for society. <laughs> yes, without, I hope you haven't forgotten about the messages. No, no. Yes. Okay. To add to this one. Yes, I think we're doing a lot of work about that, eh? about getting to the digital space. Yeah. This program is on, is on Facebook. It's on eh? Facebook. People yes. have access to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Radio is now integrating with Facebook and mm -hmm. social media. So you're there. You have an app. Yeah. Eh? So right. we are actually there. Mm. We are actually there. That is, that is, not, the, that is, that, that, that is not the problem. Mm. We are actually in digital space. Every newspaper now has a website. Mm. They have a Facebook page. Some right. have a Facebook page. Yeah. Whether they are populating it every day is another, is another question. Mm -hmm. But there is a genuine effort for the media, the delegacy media, to also take advantage of the, yes, of the digital space. But the only problem now, they are, they are not being there yet on how to make revenue from it. Mm. That is a challenge. Right. But I think we are, we, are, we are making some progress. And, yeah. and what's the problem with that? So we're talking about um, going digital mm. and how do we um, get our product digitized. The country itself is yet to meet. Yes, yeah, we don't have the infrastructure for that. No, so you, can, you, can, yeah. so you, you have to maintain that balance. You have mm. to grab the traditional way mm -hmm. and link it to the, to the, to the digital. Until we mm. have the infrastructure, like 24-hour mm -hmm. power supply, like access to data for, for, mm. for most people. If you look at the statistics, they, they're not as... Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, it's, 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 it's still about 11.7. Yeah. 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 And it was for yeah. Twitter and the other ones. And as you go into the Italians, as you go into the Italians, then it begins to decrease. And so you see, these are the challenges. Well, I... But we are making some efforts. Political. Yeah. there is what they call digital migration. Mm -hmm. and we, have there no, have we, been, we have no policy. We have no policy. <laughs> <laughs> we have no policy. <laughs> 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 SLBC is analog. SLBC is the national broadcaster. Yeah. 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 We have no migration policy. I know the media manifesto we talk about it. But as for now, we have what we call digital migration. And then there are being benchmarks, you know, for different sectors. to migrate. We have not done that yet. But then we are more analog than even hybrid. 
policy. Political, politically, then there is what we call digital migration. So we take note of the word politically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is it. It's about political no, proclamation. You know, the media itself. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and technological platforms, they are very significant. Yeah. And, you know, they, uh, algorithms. Yes, so right. now, so people must understand algorithms. So mm. Facebook, mm. when you when you are on Facebook, when you pay, um, Facebook will make sure that your content gets to the to certain so many, people that you yes, want. Exactly. So it's about money mm. as well. So yes. that's why where right. the poverty comes in. Mm -hmm. So and with, uh, when you look at Netflix, when mm -hmm. you look at all these um, online platforms, it's it's driven by algorithms. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if they know that I like films that so people saw, mm -hmm. people cry, I like love movies, mm -hmm. I like action movies, they say Send more action movies to me, to to me, mm -hmm. and on Facebook and all the media, maybe so the target, social media they the audience for you. Yeah. And they, they, they look you. at yes. what you like. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we have to make sure as media personalities to make to, to be able to counter some of the fake news and everything. We get into these algorithms, mm -hmm. and it's only by paying. Mm -hmm. That's it's the it's honest money, truth. even to boost your page, you uh, have to pay. So, 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 moving, moving on, moving forward. How do we then lay the tracks? that would take us out of this space, which I, I know it's very difficult, <laughs> I mean, to navigate our way out of it at this point, but then how do we lay the tracks for that? Tim? I think it's about collaboration, effective collaboration, I have to say, just as Doc rightly mentioned, mm -hmm. and we need to do the, to the it now. And then the collaboration, must, we must not just limit it within um, we within journalists. Mm. We need to cut across social media um, social media um, activists, or we call them bloggers, or you, then you take um, these um, CSOs and other community stakeholders. So once we collaborate, if we are to disseminate any concrete information or uh, genuine information, it will sink down to the ordinary people. Because if we fail to collaborate, then we will miss it right from there. There was a time when the Ministry of um, um, Communication started the eight, but because they failed to collaborate with other parties, I think then it, they failed, mm -hmm. and they themselves knew that they failed. They and themselves knew they, they, that they failed to 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 work on this particular gap that we are now talking about. That is why we see these guys taking advantage over this particular space. Mm -hmm. So we can only succeed in these elections and beyond if we collaborate well and see how best we can try to save this this nation. So quickly, combating fake news. A guy to say earlier's 2023 election, truth in the ballot box. Sure. Did you contextualize or quantify the damage that fake news would bring to the June um, polls? Of course, yes. We meant, and I initially told you that we mentioned the previous elections. How, um, how they were impacted by fake news mm -hmm. and the, the challenges that the country went through. Then we want to avoid that in this particular June 24th elections. Okay. So we did mention that okay. actually. Monk, quickly, how do we lay the tracks? The tracks. Um, I think we, we mentioned digital migration. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is the fundamental basis of, mm -hmm. of all of this, yes. We need to have the policy mm -hmm. and we need, to, we need to drive it. Mm -hmm. Government needs to take that very, very, very seriously. In this age of Technological revolution and, 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 and the fourth revolution also. Yeah. Yes, we still have. We are still in analog, in analog mode. So that is that is a big setback for us. And so we need to we, we need to have the, the infrastructure in place before we can we can take over that space as much as, as we want it to. And we need and that one will go with with the with the public as well. When we have more educated and literate public, and that's how we'll be able to 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 harness some of the potentials that are there for us in the digital space. Uh, yes. uh, our concern is large. Uh, um, are you threatened by what is happening with the space? We are not threatened. I, I, I won't say we are threatened. We are still doing our work. We are still, it's, a, it's, a, it's a plus for us. It's a plus for us. People say we are threatened, and yes. I think we need to reinvent some business. The fact um, that the space has been polluted. No, the fact that. That is, that is, that is not peculiar to, to, to Sierra Leone. It's all over the place. Mm. Yes. But it, it, it also depends about people's and the consumers of the news, mm. their choices as well. Mm -hmm. We need to take note of that. Here we don't do audience surveys to understand how the, how, how the trend is going about, about the audiences and know them and target them separately. You talk about AI, about uh, algorithm, uh, algorithms. algorithms. They are doing that for you by segmenting the, audi the audience so that yeah. you, you target the right people. We don't have that here. So that is a, that is a challenge. But we, 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 we are trying to do that as well. But we are not threatened in a way that people think that uh, because of social media and the delegacy media is going to die. No, no, in our context, <laughs> no. radio is 
so important. Mm -hmm. Radio is so important to people as a source of information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. TV as well. Right. Eh? Even the papers. And in the social molding, media can actually just molding, molding public eat opinion. Yes, and, 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 and we are using and we are seeing social media as, exactly. as a positive rather than, right. rather than a negative. It's yeah. not that the people who are there now are abusing it to the extent that the, the impact is, is becoming huge and huge, huge and huge. And people are think that um, um, we are we are threatened. We are not threatened. Dr. We, Musa, we, yes. what do you consider the information yes. going forward in all of this? Mm -hmm. Well, um, digital migration is one partnership collaboration, capacity building is another. Mm -hmm. You know, they were talking about the future mm -hmm. of, you know, mm -hmm. the platforms. Mm -hmm. Even when you look at the mainstream media, social media, as the case might be. But the obvious is that, um, just take what Twitter is, sorry, uh, what YouTube is doing now to radio stations and TV stations. Mm -hmm. You might tell me which one is a nation and which one is a continent. Yeah. <laughs> you realize now that, of course, YouTube is the continent mm -hmm. and then your radio station, TV stations, mm -hmm. are mere nation states in that particular continent. Mm -hmm. That means you are just seeing the future. And so if we cannot even develop YouTube content now as journalists in the next three years, where are we or where will we be, mm. you know, when we are migrating? Mm. So basically, if you look at what we call ICT for development, it means journalists are to embrace it. The state also should be ready for it. And therefore, you know, the things I mean, Monk was talking about, the fourth revolution, this mm -hmm. is information age. Mm. What will be in the market hereafter is information. So she was talking about media poverty, and I told you about information poverty. Mm -hmm. So if we are already suffering media poverty, mm -hmm. we are also going to be suffering information poverty mm -hmm. when people will be interested and ready to transact in information. Mm -hmm. So I think um, part of what um, the media manifesto mm -hmm. will be mm -hmm. emphasizing, I think, you mm -hmm. understand. Yeah. Yeah. And by, the way, we are launching, by the way, we are launching the media manifesto, what, what we as media want on the 26th of, of, of May. Yes. Yes. And we we'll call the political and, parties to commit and, to that. And mm -hmm. people must not only commit, but they should also show us the financial preparedness. Mm -hmm. yes. Because it's something that you should not just mm -hmm. promise mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. yeah. You understand? Eh? Mm -hmm. You should be ready to deliver. To deliver it's it. very much exactly. important. Mm -hmm. Because right. as we speak now, you know, we have few radio stations in Sierra Leone that have YouTube accounts. Mm -hmm. You understand? Eh? And then, no, for the you know, yeah, they are suffering. The community yeah. station is there. No, few. Yes, it's not few, that, yes. not that they are not there. Yes, yeah. they are you know, and some even go, they are edited. Yes. You know, so yeah. you have to think about that. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So I yes. think um, our preparedness, you know, to fill that space is collective. Mm -hmm. And even the academia there. Mm -hmm. If we are going yes. to train people yes. there, yes. Work, yes. this is the moment now we should now talk about digital library. Exactly. That exactly. you don't really need, you mm -hmm. know, to go to the archive there mm -hmm. to get record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? You right. sit where you are and then and go and to access, Colonia yes. Archive and, access and then you give information. information. Yes. So yes. I think uh, mm -hmm. it's part for our migration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, we have um, almost um, dealt with most of the issues, but ethical responsibility mm -hmm. from us, mm -hmm from the people as well. So um, this is a two-way street. Let's not think it any way out of the way. Like the journalists, we carry most of the we responsibility. Well. Yes, we which we, we take yeah, on, yeah, but ethical yeah. responsibilities. It's about, you know, um, prioritizing media literacy. And then critics. Yes, I see. Somebody asked about uh, whether we have whether we have uh, guidelines for yes. for people who, uh, for Social journalists who, <laughs> who are found wanting. Yes, that is a large code of ethics. A large code of ethics guides you as a journalist as a member of Sludge, to be able to abide by the laws of the profession, so that you be responsible, you be you be and, ethical, and citizens, journalists, and, yes, who, professional, who, yes. who are not part of Sludge, they can also they can also apply to them. If you want to be, if you want to, if you aspire to become somebody who is a sitting journalist, okay. but you have to you have to have credibility and trust, and people will follow you right. because of the right reasons, not for the other reasons. And in this age and in these elections, there is not a time that they, that they need professional journalists and ethical journalists than now. Mm -hmm. So let's rise up to the occasion and let's do our country good by ensuring that people have thank access you. to credible information, please. Well, thank you very much, um, gentlemen and lady. This is where we end tonight's program. Many thanks to you, Mahmoud Simkabu, um, Ahmed Sahid Nasrallah, Dr. Tonya Musa, and Istina Tilo. It's been a pleasure having all um, four of you here tonight. I've enjoyed the privilege of your time, um, gentlemen and lady. And um, to those of you who watched us on Channel 53, on the STV Channel 399, who listened to us on FM 101.7 and followed us on all our different social media platforms, especially those who contributed on the AY News Facebook page, and um, we did not read all of your messages, unfortunately, but we took some. Forgive us. Um, time was never our best of friend to have gone through all of your messages. Until we meet again, um, come, um, up next is our AYV Primetime News. The show has been AYV on Sunday. My name is Samuel Weisbangra, and uh, thanks to Professor Albert Lansana for the tie. 
Um, he lectures at the Sam Houston University in the U.S. Um, thank you very much. We appreciate you, and um, have a lovely night, and enjoy yourself.